Welcome to SWK's video series on Sage 100 Cloud. This video is for the company's controller and demonstrates the cache management tools found in Sage 100 Cloud organized on a single screen. The version we're looking at is 2020 with the subscription license and everything presented has been created with the standard tools and reports of Sage 100. To begin with, we are looking at a visual process flow. You will find the visual process flow uh, module, the fifth one down on your list on the left side of your screen. The collection of tasks here have been uh, organized using the visual process flow manager found in the uh, module setup menu. This is allowing us to collect all of the necessary reports and views that we might want to deploy when managing our cache. We're going to start with this first um, button and uh, look at a summary. This is coming from uh, Sage Intelligence and it is a very simple uh, dashboard that is going to show us the cash balances in each of our checking accounts and savings accounts and it's going to give us a visual representation of the aging for our accounts receivable and accounts payable. This is coming up in Excel and here we go. We have our account balances. We have a little bit of additional information such as net, next check number and some information from the last time that we did a bank reconciliation. And you can see here that the aging is found for both accounts receivable and accounts payable. We'll come back to our screen and the next thing we're going to look at is the cash flow estimate. This is a report found in the Bank Reconciliation module, and we have some options here of how we want it to predict our cash flow. It uh, defaults to the last day of the month, the 15th, and uh, we, you can see that we have four different buckets. We have some options here, such as cash required. We could choose it based on the invoice due date or the average number of days it takes me to pay this, each vendor. I have the same on the cash expectation side of things, the AR invoice due, or based on the average days that a customer pays me. If I choose, I can include the open purchase order numbers. And in my selection here, I have selected only three of my counts, A, B, and D. Because it is not a range, I'm putting separators, I'm creating the equal to, and then putting separators, making sure to put a separator at the, after the last value. We have two other buttons that are important uh, to note. The disbursements button allows me to enter cash requirements that are not typically found in accounts payable such as payroll or loan payments, or in my case, I added utilities because in my example, utilities are taken directly out of my bank account and I don't record it till I do my bank reconciliation. I have the same thing for receipts, but in my example, I don't have any. Let's look, take a look at the report, see what we have. You'll see that I have my three bank accounts with the total account balance. This is the expected cash I should be receiving from my customers. Here's my requirements for accounts payable, payroll, and the other items that I had put in under the disbursements button. And I expect to have through 531, $410,000 worth of cash. This number is coming up to the next column, and the same thing occurs for the next three until I get to the very end for 715, where I anticipate having $343,000 of cash. Now, we have for accounts receivable and accounts payable, just summary numbers. And if I want to see the detail, which customers are we talking about, we're going to go to the uh, reports down over here. This first is the cash requirements. And this is going to show me what I anticipate paying my vendors. And of course, I have some um, options here, such as printing in a summary format, aging credit memos, and those are options that you should try to see what works the best for you. Let's take a quick look. 
and you can see it is taking each vendor invoice and placing it in where I anticipate paying that. I have another report and this is where it's going to show me what I anticipate receiving from my customers. We'll take a look at this and it's going to put it in something like an aging format, but it's really the prediction of when I will be receiving cash from my customers. And this way I have the detail. Now, some other things that might be important as you're considering your cash management is perhaps open purchase orders. So I have added to my cash management uh, dashboard here, I have added my open purchase orders, just my standard and back orders. And I could see that I have total orders of 127,000. And I have something similar if I'm looking at my sales orders. And of course, I can put other filters in here, such as maybe I only want to see the sales orders for the next uh, 30 days. Then my last option is this would launch financial statements in the general ledger module and then I would uh, print these reports as I normally do. So what this visual process flow has done, it has organized all of the tools that I need when I am managing my cash under one simple screen. If you need help developing a screen like this or developing a, a dashboard in your Sage Intelligence, we would be delighted to assist you. Thanks for watching our video.